Hey, welcome in. Thanks for joining the channel. As always, it's Seth, Mo, and Paul for Everything Money. Uh, the three of us welcome you in, our whole team. We've talked about Discovery before. Paul, I own this stock. I bought it last January as part of my little book that beats the market, Magic Formula Investing. I spent 5K on Discovery and got, quote unquote, very lucky. Uh, you know, Paul, the, the term luck, but this stock skyrocketed from a lower than $20 all the way up to something magical, like $77. Look at this climb over here, Paul, and everything money. Look at this. This was lower of 200 bucks and it got as high as 70, like 75 bucks. And now it's dipped back down to $35 or something boy, like that. Boy, oh boy, I was riding high. Discovery is the, the mass media company. It's, it's, it's the, the television station. I love some of the shows, Animal Planet, Science Channel. I love all this stuff and I was feeling great. I'm not so much anymore, Paul. So in this video, I'd like for us to analyze Discovery, the company itself, look at the financials again. Is this still a buy now that it's dropped so severely from its peak? It has since dropped off the little book, The Beats the Market, The Magic Formula Investing. It has since dropped off, and I don't know why. Maybe as a viewer, you don't either, but Paul and Mo are here to tell us why. So let's get after Paul, what do you, what do you know about ticker symbol D-I-S-C-A Discovery? Tell me about this stock. What's going down? So um, there was a scandal recently. Not a scandal. I mean, I don't think call it, call it a scandal. There was a family office that was written about in the Wall Street Journal. They, they had a lot of leverage. At one point, I think for just equities, they were levered uh, a six to one, which is an insane amount of leverage for just equities, which means they only had 15% of equity in their margin. If they had um, $6 billion in stocks, they only had 1 billion of that was their actual cash. The rest of it was all borrowed money. They had a margin call. And what a margin call is, is the bank calls you and says, hey, you know what? We don't like this. Something's going on here. We're going to force you to sell. One of their big holdings was uh -oh. Discovery. Oh boy. So, boom. When you have billions of dollars on a company or even on an $18 billion company, you can move markets very quickly by selling off a billion or whatever the number was. I don't remember what the exact number was they had, but you can sell, when this sells off, and a lot of people out there would say, no, it's not that. That's not what caused it. I'm not saying that's exactly what caused it. But let's say that caused this. And then human emotion caused this. I don't know what the exact numbers were, but the bottom line is, this is what we discuss when we talk about euphoria. Euphoria can cause companies to skyrocket in price, and then the same thing happens by down. But it's a different kind of, it's not euphoria, it's the other swing of the pendulum, where all of a sudden people get scared and they just start selling like crazy. This was a big holding for my ex-girlfriend, Lisa, mm -hmm. in her little back book, The Beats the Market, and she was up a ton. Now, she's still up a lot for the year, but this one holding, this is why I'm glad you and her have 30 plus holdings in your stocks. Yes. It's fun to watch it jump, but it also makes it a lot easier when it falls in half like this. You know what I mean? So this is all part of the diversification when you don't exactly do really super in-depth analysis. When you're following a a method like the magic formula, it's nice to be diversified because it's all about the basket of stocks that fit a certain criteria. So when this come, when this family office all of a sudden went kaput, and Warren Buffett always says, I've met a lot of very, very smart people that go broke. Invariably, in every situation in which very smart people go broke, they go broke because of leverage. Okay, so this is an example of a, a family office that had a lot of leverage all of a sudden the rug gets pulled out from under them. The bank won't lend them anymore. The bank says, hey, we don't like these holdings. You gotta sell, causes massive sell-off. So I did buy five grand of this stock on July 1st, 2020. I, oddly enough, Paul, I'm still up 70% on exactly. this stock. Exactly, yep. yeah. And so um, what I'd like to do is look at the financials now and see, uh, you know, the P is still under 20, I believe. It might be in it our, is. Our, 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 our zone. So why don't we use our eight pillar system and get after it? Okay, so it's an $18 billion company as of this very second. The 15 PE is a check and the profit margin is a check at 11%. Oh now look at this gross margin right here. That's a 64% gross margin, which makes sense for a channel that creates content, right? Because once you create the content, you're, you're replicating it in order to gain ads. So it does make sense that every extra dollar of ad revenue would be a very big chunk of the bottom line, okay? Now here's one thing I wanna show. 1.2 billion in net income last year, 2.3 billion in free cash flow. So over almost double the free cash flow versus net income, okay? Now one thing that's interesting to me is one of the attributes of the book that beats the market is high return on assets. This company doesn't have a high return on assets. So we're gonna look further into this income statement and see how the revenue has gone over the last five years, all right? Go ahead. 
So 6.2 billion to 10.45, check mark there. Now, here's the deal though, Seth. Look at 17 to 18, 6.55 to 10. Tells me there's something happened here, whether it was probably an acquisition to make the revenue jump up a ton. But I, I don't know what happened here, but these are very big jumps when the previous four or five years weren't as big. So there was probably some sort of acquisition that happened that allowed them to really jump up. I don't know if you know what it is, Mo. Now remember guys, sure. when we do this, we don't, my goal as an investor is to start from a high level view and then go down. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the nitty gritty details about, and I've gotten criticisms, oh, you didn't do your research. You're right, I did not do my research because my goal is not to do thorough research on every single company. I wanna find the high level items that make me say, look further or ignore. Does that make me lose out on investments? Absolutely. But we all have time. We don't have all the time in the world. We have a limited amount of time. That's my goal. Let's do a pillar number four is profit growth over the past five years, Paul. 1.19 to 1.22. The yes, slightest of all check marks. Okay. Okay. Not and then the uh, share is outstanding. Can we go back, Paul? Are you surprised by that net income with that jump in, in revenue? Um, well, I mean, it does make sense. The, the, re the revenue jumped up 66%. Net income is about flat. Even with last year's, you can tell right here, there's a lot of inconsistent net income in the last five years. Look at this, 1.19, a loss, small gain, big gain, medium gain. Hmm. So this is the kind of company, guys, where when there's inconsistent income, I like to look more at the cash flow statement anyhow, but if there's inconsistent cash flows, all the more reason why an average would make more sense. Look at the average, a long-term average, because any given year, that's why we have averages for everything. When you go up to the plate, you're either going to get hit, you're going to get get on base through a walk or hit by pitch, or you're going to get you're going to get struck out or get an out. Any one of those three things can happen, right? But it's about looking at the average over a long season to see what's actually going to happen. Pillar number five is shares outstanding, uh, which we want going down, Paul. Now this makes me think even more that this was an acquisition: 392 million to 490. Yikes. But in that 17 to 18, there was a big jump from 380 million to 522 million. So they might have issued shares in order to make an acquisition along the way. Well, there there well, was an acquisition. It was, um, good call, Food Network, HGTV, and it was just under $15 billion. Oh, okay. Wow, so guys, that. this is what I'm talking about when I say the numbers and the eight pillars will tell you a story. I saw two stats there and said, okay, I don't even need to see more data. There was probably an acquisition here. It's not because I'm some savant. That's a G. It's just as you do this more and more and as you use this software more and more, you're gonna get acclimated to how to look for certain things that occur in companies and say, oh, I noticed this, that means this might've happened. And to me, the acquisition, you have to do more research and to see how the acquisition added to the top line revenue and bottom line profit to see if it was a worthwhile acquisition or not, right? And the free cash flow. These are the important things to look at. So right now, we're sitting here with higher Shares outstanding, but they have decreased in the last couple of years. Yeah, they're so buying them back over the last three. Okay, that's a good thing. They're taking their free cash flow and buying back those shares they used to to, to make the acquisition, right? Still so, an X. Still an X. Still an X, yeah. Now, guys, this software is our Everything Money app. This is the website we're using. This is something that you should, if you're really serious about taking your investing to the next level, this is what we use. We have over 2,000 people currently subscribed that so, subscribe to the software. Right now, there are two parts, all these financials, everything. Wait till the end of the video, you'll see more about how we're going to allow you to use this software to make your investing better. Pillar number six is current assets over current liabilities, Paul. Okay, so current assets is $6 billion. Current liabilities, $3 billion. Plenty. Now, I will say, this is not one of the pillars. There's a lot of debt here. $22 billion in debt. That just seems like a lot for... For a company with, uh, well, maybe not with 10 billion. I don't know. Everybody always asks me, why don't you look at total liabilities and long term liabilities? Because every industry is different. So I don't want to attach a, a certain criteria to that. The good news is they have over double the money they need to pay off their current liabilities. Pardon me, which is a check mark right there. I'd love to know how debt works for TV because obviously they got to put a lot of money to film some of these things in there. Is that is that a part of this? Or I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I'm sure it, it's, it's that's part of the that's part of the importance of looking at their uh, their 10K. Understand what their long-term debt is attached to. Why do they have long-term debt? I mean, yesterday, one of the things we want to talk about yesterday, there was a company that just increased its dividend to compete with its competitors. They literally said, just to show, they haven't had free cash flow in seven or eight years. And hmm. I'm like, so what are they doing to issue, to issue dividends? They got to issue debt. shares or, or debt. 
or debt. Either sell shares or create debt. Okay. Either way, it's dil- it's 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 ruined. It's bad for investors, right? I see. They can do one of those two things, and more likely situation is they're probably issuing debt in order to pay a dividend. I, I just look at these things, saying these are all part of the. This is all part of the eight pillars. Is to get your idea. We have a question now to ask because Seth brought up a question. Oh, you know, how are they? What, what's the debt like? These are the questions you need to be asking as you look forward. What about free cash flow? This is the granddaddy of all free cash flow growth over the past five years. My favorite thing in the world. Now, guys, one of the reasons I was saying before this software is amazing. We immediately added a line to the investing section that gives you your free cash flow because free cash flow is cash from operations minus your capital expenditures. Instead of making you guys do all the math, I tell you what they are in the extra line here and I give you the average. So, Five years ago, 1.29, now 2.34. Now I'm happy and I'm seeing consistent, look at this big jump in the year of the acquisition. A billion dollar jump in free cash flow, right? They spent 15 billion on this and got a billion dollars more in free cash flow. So they got about a 6% yield, a 15 to one yield on that acquisition from price to free cash flow. But the thing I like about this is even though their earnings were up and down, their free cash flow was steadily increasing and steadily up. Now. Last year, there was a big drop in free cash flow. Is it COVID related? I don't know, but these are part of the questions to ask because they went from 3 billion in free cash flow down to 2.34. That is a over a 20% drop in free cash flow. How about pillar number eight is price to free cash flow. We're gonna take that free cash flow average and multiply it by uh, our wonderful multiple, Paul. So what's the, um, the current uh, market cap of the company? 18 billion. 18 billion. The five-year average, 2.13. That's less than nine. Chickity, 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 check. This is me- all. This is all. All checks besides shares outstanding, which is going that down is over the past three. And guys, for those of you who do not um, look at our software on a daily basis to make it easier for you, check this out. The eight pillars page. Oh baby. There you go. All your checks and X's, and it's going to tell you all these attributes here. At eight point five eight on the price of free cash flow, with two of those years, by the way being the years they had less revenue. This company just a month ago was selling for almost 20 times free cash flow over the last five years. Now it's at nine times. This is why this is a, I just sold puts today on Discovery at $30 a share. It's currently at, it's actually at 36. This is the end of day yesterday. So I sold puts at 30 for May 21. You want this in your hands if this thing keeps dropping. I want this thing in my hands at 30. So I sold somebody the right to have me buy, to have me buy the shares from at thirty bucks if the shares b- drop, drop below that on May twenty first. I love this. I like this channel. I like the stock. And at thirty bucks, it's going to be selling for less than seven times free cash flow over the last five years. Over the last year, it's going to be selling for even less than that. Still, so I like this company a lot. Still love it, baby. I, I mean, especially now because it's at thirty seven. <clears throat> the only reason I see, the only reason I've seen for the stock to have fallen is this. What's the name of the company? Arkegos. Arkegos. That's yeah. the only reason I've seen it for the fall. I think it's back on the radar. Anything below 30, I'm a happy guy. In fact, if I get assigned this shares at 30, I'll probably write more contracts in the future at lower prices to keep building my, my, my position because this free cash flow seems to be pretty solid. And I've done more research on the company than just this. So I'm very comfortable with the future cash flow expectations of the business. You're making me feel a lot better about my 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 stake in this company because I was freaking out. You know? Why were you freaking out? Well, that's the emotional part, right, Paul? Is the emotion is like you I would, forgot that you're still up seventy percent. I was. That's right. I was up two hundred percent, and yeah. you just think this puppy's going to keep going to the moon, of course. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my god! Now you know you've taught me to stay the course because I got out of that uh, ebix. I got out of ebix. Uh, I thought fraud would immediately. Get me out of this this company, not to change the subject. By the way, look at Ebix. What did I sell out at? Thirty five. It be. And you felt pretty good. By the way, this is short term. You felt really good when it was at twenty five. And I said, listen, we looked at the we looked at the scandal and said they can easily afford this. I mean, all the things they're saying that's wrong, they can easily afford to write that check and make it right. So I look at the saying, don't deviate. When you have a system in place, guys, you start to do worse when you deviate. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let's head over to our trading specialist. If you're in that bid ass nation, that middle Patreon tier, and you're making all that cheddar, you know and love our Egyptian dream boat, the dream boat that is Mo. Mo, how are you? And tell us about discovery from a trading aspect. I love you. So looking at it, I'm going to start on the long-term chart, then I'm going to go to a more detailed short-term chart. So right now, I mean, we did have a lot of people that just kind of shorted this down when that Archegos thing happened. 
And now it's just kind of gradually going side, eh, sideways slash losing money and it's in that oversold area. So can you keep shorting this is the real question. If you do it on a daily, day-to-day basis, probably. If you do it on a weekly basis like I just showed you, probably not. The thing that gives me confidence to say you can short this probably down another $6, current price is at $3.85. I see this thing going around its 200-day moving average, which is this white line right here, that is about $30, $32, something like that. So I think that you're going to be able to get some kind of short-term drop to that point, but going back to even our puts level, I'm like, yeah, I, I hope this thing can get to $30, and I don't really think that it's going to drop below 30 that much below 30 unless some news comes out, because we have to remember... But, but if the 200-day moving average is around 30 and yeah. it goes below that and closes before that, isn't that a... Isn't that a, a that's, that's a, a bad thing. That's that, a bad thing. If it breaks below its 30-day moving or 200-day moving average, it means that it doesn't have really any support down there, and that thing can really start going down. But as a value investor, I look at that as it's wonderful. Yeah, and we're looking for that break below the 200 that we can okay, we're going to have an opportunity to buy more and more shares correct. at cheaper prices. And doing the research that I've done on this, like Arcagos, this was very bad. The stock price reflected that, but. I haven't seen anything in the fundamentals of the company that have necessarily changed. It's all this emotional reaction. So that's what gives me hope and says, yeah, I really want to buy this. Besides all these confusing numbers, tell me about the new love in your life. How was your weekend, Mo? That's what I'm really concerned about. I to hell with discovery. <laughs> How was that weekend with that new beautiful girl of yours? It was very good. Paul's met her a couple times. What a stunning woman. You met her? Of course. She's a very nice person. So charming. Huh? Paul, let's get back on topic here. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time I text Mo and there's no answer, I'm like, <laughs> He's busy He's with her. <laughs> Good for you, Mo. The glisten on your face, Paul. Final, final thoughts on Discovery. I'm I love it. Please do your research. Yeah. Do not buy just because of me. You are going to make me. I make mistakes all the time. Don't buy just because of me. Do your research. Make sure you like it. Make sure you love it. But um, I am selling puts. I'm just trying to buy this thing as cheap as possible. Keep selling puts for here on out. Anytime it's below thirty-five bucks. I'm going to be selling puts at 30 bucks or lower and just build my position up in Discovery. And they have earnings coming out on April 28th. So when that comes out and the 8K comes out, which is their quarterly report, go ahead and read through it, see what changed. They're going to talk about everything that happened with Arkegos, and that's what, good from there. Expect a deep dive from us on this when that, uh, the new yeah. info comes out for sure. sure. If you love what you're seeing, this disciplined, uh, fundamental and style of investing, you can click the link below to join our Patreon. Paul, we just hit 2,000 patrons. Incredible. Every week we make a new Patreon tier, it fills up and the price goes up. The patrons have waited months and months, over six months. They finally got that solved for last week, Paul, and they are freaking out. You know this, they love this, and uh, show this beautiful graph. So guys, I created this software because so many people kept asking me, how do I, I used to use white charts. White charts is $500 a month. I think the minimum is $200 a month. Everybody kept saying, I said, you know what? Let's just make this thing, because Mo and I need it anyhow. Let's just go make this thing. The amount of success it's had. We have over. We were expecting to sell 700 spots by the end of December 2021. It is currently April, and we have over 2,000 spots sold. Because the exciting part is, it includes a Discord channel where all everybody gets together in lots of chats and talks about different topics and different stocks, music, everything. It's become a community. Now, when I made this, it was $14 a month. Not anymore, baby. It started at eight. Now it's at 22. On its way to 49. And look at all the things you get. All these things that we're adding more. We're going to make an app. We're working on the app right now. Reti this retirement calculator has been very, very popular and successful. It's awesome. Discord. Uh, guys, if you're serious about investing, serious about understanding companies and their financials, this is the way to go. It's $22 a month. It's 60, 70 cents a day. I think you're crazy for not doing it. 2,000 other people do it. have done it. They can't be wrong. Do it and do it yourself. That's our show, Discovery. Uh, look, on, uh, look, look for it. Uh, we will update this. I still love this too. Paul, you call my nerves, which is what I need in my life. I need you to tell me everything's going to be okay, to coddle me, cuddle me, and, and fondle the thumbs up, which I always ask for. So thanks for watching. Tickle that thumbs up on the way out. We love you guys. Thanks.